okay so similar to this code that we have written here okay we are calling a constructor which is actually taking one parameter and if you try to create an account without using these parameters like in this fashion that we have okay not in this fashion what let's say if we try to create another account okay account a1 equals to new account so this is what this is our default constructor okay later if you want to initialize the variables then you have to initialize initialize in this form like a1 dot whatever name and whatever other fields that you give that you have to initialize yourself if you want to use the parameterized constructor then you can use it for the initialization of those variables so that structure is already defined in account class okay so that is what actually is happening in the back end so don't get confused here okay so this is a simple uh, just keep it uh, like simple only okay so this is a parameterized constructor which is already created by salesforce we are using it so as many parameters as you pass those fields will be added to that okay so that's just an example that i've seen i've shown you guys okay so what we can do is we can go to uh, we can create a new class okay we can say something like maybe constructor demo okay okay so the first point that you have to remember about the constructor is that if you create any constructor be it a parameterized or be it a default constructor in the class if you create a constructor then the system will not add any default constructor for you and system adds only default constructor it will never add any parameterized constructor okay if you have created any parameterized or any default constructor inside the class then the system will not add it okay in that case you have to be careful because let's say you have added uh, one parameterized constructor okay you have added one parameterized constructor which is supposed to accept okay constructor which is supposed to accept some maybe like three parameters okay three params are there so if you try to create a uh, account I'm, I'm sorry if you try to create a, a object for this constructor demo okay something like this if you try to create and this is just an example okay then don't, don't take it uh, in that syntax way so if you try to create a constructor uh, for or you call a constructor to create an object for this let's say constructor demo c equals to new uh, demo okay if you do like this it will throw us an error okay why because this default constructor is not available anywhere because we have already added one pa three parameters parameterized constructor so the system will not add any default constructor initially when we used to create a uh, object using this the system used to add that uh, constructor inside our code but as we have added one uh, non-default constructor then it will not add anything okay that is that is one critical thing that you have to remember okay then you will be able to use or you will able to create the objects only using the constructors that you are putting okay not the default one you can, if you add a default constructor again then you will be able to do, use that so if you add one default constructor also okay and default constructor also you add in that case if you use this this will work fine okay did you get the point Um, yeah okay okay now let's check it out what uh, we have to do okay so first we'll check out our default constructor so we have something for default constructor okay so how to create a default constructor by now you guys should know we should not type any return type here and we should just have the same name as that of the class so we'll just copy the name and we'll give it here okay and the constructor should also be public you have to make it public and share the same name as the class so this is our default constructor already we have created now okay so one default constructor is available so now whenever you try to create an object using this constructor it will let us create it okay now there are something called parameterized constructors also so in that parameterized constructor what you can do is you can use it the same syntax you write public and then you write the name of the class and inside this you can pass certain parameters okay so what is the use of those parameters is that you will be using it to initialize the variables okay if you want to initialize certain variables let's say we have an integer here integer i okay and then we have 
um, certain account let's say we have account we want to retrieve one account also from database and we want to display that okay so account how i can show you okay let's say account acc i sort of so we d we were discussing something else so you did not miss any point so we just started with parameterized constructor and default constructor so that, okay sir okay so okay that's fine okay so why it's throwing us an error because both the constructor looks same both of them are default you can add only one default constructor in that okay you cannot add like same thing multiple times okay that is another point okay let's say we have two variables one is integer and one is account so we can re remove this this doesn't make any sense so let's remove this so let's say we have an account we want to retrieve certain accounts okay so that initialization we can do using constructor so by default constructor we if you don't want to do anything that is fine default constructor is used only to create an object for this particular class and then later on you can initialize acc equals to whatever you want okay but let's say if you want to initialize it dynamically whenever somebody creates and uh, creates a uh, object for this class they have to pass something inside this okay so what they have to pass it's like let's say uh, they have to pass one string okay they have to pass one name okay so they have to pass the name of the account okay so and that name of the account we'll retrieve from the database and we'll just display it okay or we can initialize using this so what we can do is we can use acc okay dot uh, or not dot acc equals to we can initialize acc equals to we can run a query now like select select name uh, comma id uh, from account where name equals to then this is something called a bind variable that we'll see when you uh, we study the query okay so if you want to use variables inside the query the variables also you can use directly using this colon okay so if we did not use dynamic querying if we had uh, already the name in our mind then we could have given it something like inside the quotes right so instead of giving it uh, in the quotes that means if we quote it then it, it's like hard coding like we are hard coding it and every time we run this uh, or create an object for this class every time it will give us the same record but we don't want that we want the user to give the name and that name should be populated dynamically so whatever he is passing in this string n that we want to take so for that we need bind variable okay so we have to just put one colon and then we have to use the variable name whatever the name of the variable okay and if you remember the scope class the scope of the variables that we have seen so this string n this is a local variable and its scope is available only between these two brackets if you use uh, n here anywhere outside it will not recognize okay so that's a local variable and this is a global variable the so global variable can be used from anywhere okay okay so that's about it so we will be just initializing our uh, global variable using the constructor okay and this constructor will be retrieving the record and then that record that name sh should be passed by the user okay 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 so how else can we demonstrate this mm. okay so count will be retrieved so whenever you try to create an object you should get this okay okay so let's just save this okay so let's uh, so this is our class okay now if you want to execute this you can either call these constructors from another class or you can also do it from anonymous window okay basically what we will be doing in the actual thing is we will be connecting it to some kind of methods or we will be connecting to some some kind of buttons okay so when we will be creating visual force pages let's say we create a visual force page for opportunity okay and where it has certain buttons so when we try to click on these buttons then that will be triggering our classes okay so that is how dynamically we will be doing as of now to demonstrate we have not studied visual force page so i'm not uh, going there so just to demonstrate this example we are using anonymous window okay this is not mandatory to use it okay and in the actual code we will never be using anonymous window unless we have to debug something okay okay so let's move forward okay so what we have to do is we just have to create a we, we just have to create one object for us okay so if we want to create an object let me also show you this point so default constructor if we don't have okay 
and then if you try to create an object it should throw us an error like if you try to create an object without any parameter that should throw us an error okay because there's no default constructor and as we have added one constructor system will also not add any uh, default constructor for us okay so if we try to do a uh, create a object for constructor demo uh, cd equals to let's say new constructor demo okay let's try to use this and let's see what happens okay so the constructor is not defined constructor demo not constructor okay so there's no constructor uh, available which is without any parameter okay so now if we remove this part also okay let me just control z and i'll cut everything together okay so if we remove this part also that means as of now we have not added any constructor in the class so now if we execute this now it should work perfectly fine okay because in this time system is adding that default constructor here and it is creating our object so that's why it is working fine okay so you got that difference like why it was throwing error that there's no constructor and why is it working now is that point clear okay okay so now let's try to utilize this okay and let's try to uh, create one parameterized uh, uh, let's try to pass the parameter here Okay, so one, one yes. small question before you go forward. Yes. So do we, while uh, passing the parameters on the object, do we uh, define the uh, public constructor demo? Do we do uh, do we define the de default constructor? I did not get the question. No. While we pass the parameters in the constructor, mm -hmm. do we also define the default constructor or uh, not required? Just... Okay. Could you please like rephrase your question? I did not uh, like catch. No, it. that was my question. So when you're making, creating a, on an object, mm -hmm. so you will will you define a default constructor? Like on a usual object, you do uh, define a default constructor, right? It's automatically called if you don't define. Yes. Right. So yes. in this, what is the reason for you calling this? You cannot. You can take this out of the class, right? Yes. Yes. The default. Unless yeah if you're not using it you can take it out i'm just keeping it for safety purpose let's say if somebody creates a object uh using the default constructor so that's why i'm just adding this default constructor oh so well basically you can create a, a class uh, an object with the default constructor and parameterized constructor is that what you mean yeah you can use both the constructors here okay yeah that was my doubt okay you can use both the construct and in apex how uh, in in java how it used to happen no matter how many constructors you create okay all the constructors the first line will be like this it will call this okay what does this mean is that it will call the parent constructor so that is called something called constructor chaining i'm not sure if that happens here also i've not never tried it so we can try something like this system dot debug let's say default i just want to see if this default constructor is also called or not uh, just this for my own sake if you want you can understand it but that's not like very important you can skip it also if you just don't understand that is fine i just want to see if that constructor chaining is available in apex also or not so this is our params constructor okay so let me try to just call this constructor and let's see what happens okay so i go to anonymous and instead of using the default constructor i am passing one string and that string should be something matching with the name okay and that object will be available here so we can give some name from our account let's say we have a dell account okay so with that we can pass so that we can pass here dell so this dell will be copied to this n and that n in turn will come in this query and we will get the query select n id uh, name id from account where it will make it look like this it will look exactly like this instead of this n it will replace the value of the n with in the query okay so this del this will cut here and this will paste it here instead of this variable did you get this point this is this is pretty straightforward i think yeah this is yeah, yeah. okay okay so let's see what happens here i just want to check if that default constructor is also called or not let's try to execute this 
let me see what happens oh no only the parameterized constructor is called so that is okay so just one more thing let me check if we use just a second okay 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 so if you want to call any other constructor from any other constructor that also you can do okay so you have to use this instead of this means it's the current context that means this is the current object you're referring to or current class you're referring to so if you use something like this so this keyword is very very useful you can check it out more about this keyword in apex also so how to use that if you use this and so that means you are calling the default constructor from here okay so this is called constructor chaining so if you want you can just like methods if you want to call any other method from any other method you just put the signature so similarly we can also put something like constructor demo if, if we put this here it's the same thing okay but it's not required you can just use this that means it will con call the constructor from here okay or if yes. you if you call something like this if you call it from here if you call and then you pass some string okay let's say you call, pass del from here that means this constructor will be called whenever you call this constructor okay so that is something i remembered so i just added that okay okay fine so let's if that's getting confusing then we'll just skip that part okay so we can remove this we don't need this debug we don't need this debug as well okay so when we try to create an object here by passing the record name okay the name of the account then an object will be created okay using this constructor okay and now if you use cd dot acc so what are we calling using cd dot acc cd is the object of this particular object uh, of this particular class yeah so that using that object name you can access the variable so one variable is acc so that you can access so if you do like system dot debug to check what is the content of this particular uh, uh, variable then that will show you the account which is it which it is retrieving so the name whatever whatever we are passing that is coming here to our constructor and that is getting initialized here okay so now if we debug this it should give us that particular account okay variable does not exist constructor demo dot acc constructor demo hmm. so as i said that the, by default the variables are public so i'm sorry private so you cannot it will not be visible from anywhere outside the class unless you define it as public okay so that is why it was throwing that error okay okay so moving forward let's see what we have got here so it is uh, retrieving the uh, fields that we are querying okay so that means we initialize the variable in our class using the constructor okay that is the use of the constructor Okay, that's the use of the parameterized constructor. If you have any more variables here, you can also initialize that out. Okay, so this is a parameterized constructor. If you want, you can have more parameters also. Okay, you can add more parameters also, and that also you can initialize. Uh, if you have more variables, you can initialize using those parameters also. Okay, so every time you create an object using this constructor, you have to pass those parameters. Okay. So how will the uh, com uh, the compiler recognize that which constructor it has to call? It will check the signature of the constructor. Signature is the name along with the parameter. So if you don't pass the want the if you don't pass the parameter, it will call this constructor. If you pass the parameter, it will call this constructor. Okay. So the name is same. This is called polymorphism. Okay. So actually we are using calling the same method, but depending on the parameters, it's behaving differently. So that is something I remembered. So I said, okay. So this parameterized constructor, you guys understood? Like, what is the parameterized constructor? 
in the so we can also pass multiple parameter like uh, over there in the same constructor in the same constructor you can no 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 not here if you have defined the constructor like this then you cannot pass more parameters here like if you give something like okay. more maybe some test if you pass anything else only it, string yeah it will no not not string let's say anything else if you pass any other data type okay let's mm -hmm. say even four five six if you add something like this so it will take it as an integer only now if you call okay. this it will actually throw you an exception or an error saying that it does not match with that constructor there's no constructor it is found with these two parameters okay yeah, yeah, yeah. which is the same case which will happen if we remove this default constructor and we try to call a default constructor by by not passing anything it's the same error so if you execute this part okay. you'll get something that it is not able to get any constructor with a string and with with integer these two parameters are not available so depending on the parameter it is trying to find which is the constructor matching with this signature so actually it was not able to find so it threw an exception or an error okay if we don't have this constructor defined it will give us the same error if we call this uh, this constructor to create an object which we already have seen in the first instance if you give something like this and if you don't pass any parameters then it is going to call this constructor if it's available it will call if it's not available then by default system is not going to put any default constructor this time okay as we have already added one constructor so it will not add anything now if you do it will all say that it's not able to find the constructor with this parameter yeah okay so depending on the parameters that you put matching with that it will give, uh, call those methods okay so the same thing you can do the same kind of polymorphism behavior you can also do with methods also so let's say these are constructors okay why constructor because they say share the same name of the class and they don't have any void or any return type so that means it's a constructor that you have created now let's say if you have certain methods okay you have certain methods like public uh, return type should be let's say string okay and then if you have some method let's say poly method okay it accepts one parameter let's say it accepts one string and str okay okay so in this case we want just want to demo demonstrate so we'll just put one demonstrator uh, like debug here so we will take the signature of this particular method so signature does not include the string or the return type why i'll tell you why later okay so uh, the signature includes only the parameters and the name okay so if you want to check out if this is called or not uh, called okay just we want to see if this is called or not okay and it has to also return one string because we have added one return type so as of now just for simplicity we'll keep it as a void okay and now let's try to create another method okay so let's try to create another method here with the same name but we'll pass something else let's say we want to pass one integer okay let's say even the uh, if the variable is same it doesn't matter okay we can because it's local it will not recognize duplicacy because if this str is different this str is different okay so that is fine so just for simplicity we'll keep it here okay so we will put this log inside this mm, this is called okay so it is not throwing any syntax error it's it's checking out that both the methods are same but still not throwing any syntax error okay why because the signature is different and when we pass the parameters it will determine which method it has to call either this one or this one okay so when we save it okay so let's say we try to create one object okay we have created one object and then using this object if we try to call a method cd dot uh, poly method okay now if you don't give any parameter it will throw us an error because it will say that there's no method defined with this blank parameter okay so it's not able to find any method with this name with this name is there but the signature is not matching from the class constructor demo okay so you have to match the parameter also so let's say we try to give something boolean we will pass true okay we will pass it true there is no method with the, with the parameter passing as true so if you execute it again it will say the same error because it's not able to match with the signature okay now what is happening now what we will we'll do is we will try to pass some correct parameters so we will pass some string 
let's say we pass this is this is a string now okay just to stop confusion we can pass uh, something else let's say test string okay now if we pass this the method name is same but the signature is different so if you execute this it will aram say it will call this method because it's able to match that parameter okay and we will get that log here that string method is called what was the uh, method we are calling we are calling the string method only so this is calling okay that is the same what is happening in this case of parameterized constructor also okay so signature of this constructor and this constructor is different so it's able to distinguish which is the constructor it has to call okay similar cases here also so it is able to distinguish so now if we take the same code and if we pass instead of string if we pass some integers here okay let's say we pass some integer okay now in that case if we try to execute this it will be around it will be easily able to recognize which method is it has to call okay so both the methods will be called here okay okay so when we are calling string the string method is getting called when we call integer the integer method is called getting called okay this this point is clear yeah it's clear now okay okay so another thing is the return type let's check out if the return type it's able to uh, distinguish or not okay what we will do is we'll match the parameters of both the methods okay we'll match the parameter of both the methods and we'll just distinguish them by so right now it's going throwing an error because both of them are same only okay so it, it's showing one problem so method already defined poly method it's already defined okay which was not happening in the previous case when we had different parameters okay so that is a syntax error okay now let's try to change the return type let's try to return maybe boolean okay so once we call the uh, debug then we can return something like false okay, or maybe true anything okay so let's try to save it and let's see what happens so it is still not letting us save it because it's not able to distinguish these two methods okay so this is not part of the signature so this return type is not part of the method signature method signature means from here to here that is the signature if the signature is same then it will not let you create another method with the same signature okay so this return type is not coming under uh, oops return type is not included in the signature okay so that is the point i wanted to make here okay you cannot create multiple methods with uh, same signature okay you guys got understood what signature is signature is from mm -hmm. this name and the parameters mm -hmm. okay so, so if we, we use the return type for uh, the para uh, for the for the poly method we use this void uh, sub in every case like when you are defining a parameter in a method with the signature I, I i didn't i didn't get that no i mean uh, can you explain that line number 19 once you, you put public void and uh, method name and then the parameter is the yes you put string as yeah, right yes so uh, it has to be in the same manner when you define every uh, method with a parameterized uh, any uh, string or something no 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 that is not the point that i wanted to make see it doesn't matter if you put return type void or if you if you put boolean or if you put string okay there is nothing written that you have to write it in this form only only the syntax you have to follow okay you can use void you can use boolean string whatever return type you want you can do okay but there is a syntax that is defined that you have to do it in this manner it doesn't mean that you have to always use void with the parameterized method no that is not the point so what i wanted to say is that this is this is this is very feasible you can you can have any return type here if you want you can return account also no issues but you have to return that account okay so that is not the point so the point is that you can create methods like this also you can create methods with a boolean return type also but they should not have the same name as an existing method they should not have yes, the same yes, signature yeah understood okay so if you remove this part then we will not have any issues yes i understood awesome okay so yeah 
so that should not create an issue so what i wanted to say is that polymorphism does not recognize when you uh, give the it, it's not based on the return type it's only based on the signature of the method yes okay 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 all right all right so the constructor parameterized constructor that we got Okay, so let me just comment this part from here. To here. Okay, so that is about our constructors. Okay, so constructors we have to use to initialize the variables. We should not do something like ACC equals to then do it directly here. That is not the way. Okay, that is definitely possible, but we should not be doing like that. We have to initialize it using the constructors. Okay, either this constructor or this constructor. That is why constructor is created. Okay, so that is object-oriented programming for you guys. Okay, now uh, similarly you can uh, access some more or you can create some more parameterized constructors also. Okay, you can try passing something else. If you don't want something today with do with account or something, if you want to initialize some other uh, names or some other variables also, that also you can do. Okay, you can have something like public, maybe string. If you want to initialize some string, enough of string, we don't want string. So if you want to initialize something like uh, is checked. Okay, is checked. So is checked, it, it with the name, it's clear that it's some kind of Boolean whether it's checked or not okay so in this account object let's see we have any check boxes or not uh, view fields let's see check box check box check box there is nothing sir. yes sir so we can create a tab also this i created one university and college like that so we can create uh, through code this tab, tab also or not uh, this university like a university or college i created uh, manually in uh, this admin part mm -hmm. objects is talking about object see object is different uh this object that we are using don't get confused here this object is this is different this is like apex objects okay this uh, objects that we are creating these are apex objects the s object is different s object are like products account these are different okay so when you create an uh, object uh, to answer your question short short you you cannot create like that you cannot create tabs or okay. you cannot create objects like this object okay that is different okay, okay? you cannot create okay. like that so if you create something like this you are creating a structure or if you're creating a table in the database Okay, like in SQL, you have tables, right? So that is what this particular, these things mean, accounts, opportunities. Okay, these are nothing but tables only. And you are creating records that is adding some values to the record. You can only add values. Okay, you cannot create okay. the whole table using the code. Okay. Okay, you can populate and certain sir, values. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, one more doubt, like we are creating the records using Apex. So okay. is that code getting saved in the memory like after the record is created? in the memory it is saved in this anonymous window if you close it and if you open it again it will be saved and if i okay, save and, this yeah. yeah 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 go ahead no 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 go ahead it's fine okay okay and if we modify the record will it modify a code also if we modify the suppose, record then yep suppose if we change the name of the record that we created so will okay. it affect the code that from here uh, yeah exactly no, 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 it will not do that. It will not. It's not relevant to that, right? No. It's uh, independent. Yeah, it's not like we are not doing any kind of mapping. These two are not connected. It's just that we are accessing that field and we are changing the value. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so it's not one to one mapping that if you change it here, it will change there also. No, that, that doesn't happen. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay so uh, there is something called pass by value and pass by reference. Okay, if you, this, yeah, yeah. This is, yeah, this is all passing by values. We are not passing by reference. Okay, so even the reference, you cannot, uh, I mean, I don't think that is possible. That you can change it according to, or if you change the code or the, the values from here, it will not change that. No, that is not happening. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah, what I had to say for what? Um, okay, so where were we? Uh, the spoiling method. Okay, before moving forward, you guys have any questions? Mm, not as of now. Oh, all good, okay. Okay, Shrikant, all good? Yeah, yeah, so, yes. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, so here we have some uh, variable which is maybe is checked. So if you want, you can add, if you want to create some parameters like that, if that is relevant here, okay then you can add that also in the parameter okay let's say if you want to uh, get the record okay which is if you want to connect this account with a record which has name equals to whatever name the user is passing and also if you have another condition like you can put another condition and and uh, this there's no checkbox in the account uh, okay and you can put another condition let's say something like some other field will take it okay and uh, let's say you can say something like potential value is less than or you can put any other condition maybe uh, rating is a pick list okay and rating equals to hot cold or warm something like that okay so we'll change this to string okay uh, i will check status or this is not the status this is something like rating okay if you want to uh, accept this rating also as a parameter in the constructor that also you can uh, do so what you can do is you can just uh, add another string here okay and you can pass maybe r okay so now whenever you call this okay you have to uh, accept the r also so the user whenever he tries to create an object he has to pass that r also r is a string so rating we he has to pass something like hot okay so, so then these two uh, matching criteria and uh, and 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 rating so rating what is the name of the or the api name of rating i think it should be rating only so and rating equals to here we can use another bind variable which is r Okay, we don't have to like dynamically type hot, cold, or medium, whatever it is. We can also use the uh, variable which we have created. Okay, which is the local variable. Okay, so this query should be able to work. What happened to this? Okay, so this is also totally feasible. This also, you want, if you want, we can do. Okay, so in the constructor, you can pass as many parameters as you want. Okay, so that is also okay. So let's say we have uh, uh, somewhere where we can get some rating. So in some of the accounts, do we have any rating? Let's check out. So we have not even populated the rating. One second. or we'll put some rating to this our own uh, Dell Dell record only okay we'll put some rating here let's say we'll make it uh, warm okay if we make it warm okay it will not be able to if we if we try to call that uh, if we pass if we pass the name as Dell and if we pass uh, the rating as hot okay so it will not be able to find any record okay because there's no record we have instead of hot we have used as warm right so we have to pass warm only then it will get that particular record okay so now it should be able to get that record so what the point i wanted to make is that you can pass multiple parameters also okay and those parameters will be copied here okay so depending on the parameters our constructor will work okay 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 so this is fine right the uh, 
constructor chaining or uh, like method chaining or uh, calling different methods uh, passing different parameters that is all okay right because this is the building block in the future we'll be using lots of helper methods with the same uh, type only okay they will all have some kind of parameters and they'll all have some return types okay in any kind of visual force pages we'll have lots of these kind of methods so whatever doubt is there so you can clear it now only or else you will have difficulties later okay so as of now all clear yes okay okay so let's jump to our another topic so we have something called interfaces this we will not cover as of now this is related to objects only but it will confuse more okay so creating custom objects so creating custom objects are the same thing that i've already told you guys like creating custom objects like these okay so account object opportunity object okay this these objects you can create like that also like like here here you're creating records right so okay, okay. the multi pick list thing is not working okay i'll check it out okay i'll check it out let me know okay so i'll check it out over the weekend and i'll let you um, get let you guys know okay sir okay okay so creating objects or uh, you can also create objects which are like s objects okay you can create records and you can also insert those records and after you have inserted there are other dml operations also along with insert you have other dml operations which are so what's a dml operation anybody remember it will actually manipulate the object the records in the database correct uh, so uh, yes so that's database manipulation language okay so we are actually manipulating the database so we have so many uh, others other data mill uh, dml operations also so we have something called insert then we have something called update we have upsert okay and then we have delete then we have undelete okay so these are the other dml operations which are available okay so, so now with this we can delete and update the fields right i'm not wrong yes yes so we using these operations you can manipulate your uh, records more so you can update the records so let's say we have inserted the opportunity okay opportunity is inserted id is created these fields are already populated okay now after inserting this opportunity okay let's say you want to create some or you want to add some values to the mo uh, to more uh, to those fields okay so whatever the account you are generating let's say you are you are not populating the account id here because maybe you have not created the account id okay you have not inserted the account as of now let's say we don't have anything here okay let's just remove this part okay as of now we have created one opportunity and we want to connect to that opportunity with this account later okay after creating that particular opportunity let me try to delete this part also Okay, so let me delete this part also. Okay, how much have I written? Okay. Okay, so how do you achieve that? Let's say after creating this account, okay, you want to update the field of this particular uh, opportunity ID. So you're not sure if this ID is getting, uh, if this record is getting generated in the uh, system or not. Okay, this might not also uh, this might also not be generated because of some validation failure or some kind of insertion failure. Okay, so if you want to check that if ID is generated is generated only in that case if you want to populate that field, which is our opportunity field, then you can do something like you can put one if statement. So this if if and all we'll see in detail. As of now, what we can do is you can do something like a dot ID uh, not equals to blank uh, not blank not equals to null that means the uh, the value some values there it's not null in that case what you want to do is you want to update this opportunity with this value okay so what you can do is you can do opp dot uh, account id whatever we did uh, earlier same thing we are doing equal to a dot id okay now once you have done this still the field will not be updated in the system because you have not done any dml operation that means you have not manipulated or you have not changed anything in the database this is just present in the uh, code 
okay so if you want this change to reflect in the system then you have to do a dml okay that dml either you can do here or you can do anywhere later also so what you have to do is you have to do opp sorry update opp okay now when it will update that field will be populated okay so the difference we can check it out here also so let's say i don't want to put this here so let's say if i insert one opportunity uh, i'll put some different name test uh, not test let's say we'll put some meaningful name let's say tcs account okay oh it's an opportunity so tcs opportunity something like that okay so i've created one date also prospecting also so let's say if it is a maybe or we'll, no, it doesn't matter okay now if we try to execute this okay only one record will be generated but it will not have any account connected to it so we go to opportunity here we go to the tab so we'll have one record creating for tcs app this is up but there's no account generated here okay there's no account updated here there's no account where is account uh, there's no account name populated here okay now if you want to update that later okay in that case what we can do is we have to update that account so let's say we generated one account uh, let's say this is called maybe tcs or tata account okay so that we have generated and it's a type is prospect type is prospect okay type is prospect description is this is in description so then we insert after inserting we want to check whether that record is inserted or not and after that we want to update that okay so if we do this from here to here once uh, from here to there once again then it will create another record with the same name tcs opportunity and it will update that but we don't want to do that what we want to do is we want to retrieve or uh, we, we want to update the same opportunity the same opportunity okay this opportunity only so what we can do is we can re uh, retrieve it using a sql query so we can take uh, opp or we can take opportunity o equals to and we can retrieve that from the query select name uh, comma Mm, account uh, no, not not now uh, id from opportunity mm, where name equals to mm, tcs op where did that go Where name equals to TCS op and the, uh, where and uh, which is created today. Okay, so we'll put something like created date equals to uh, date dot. Okay. I'm not sure if you can use this like this way. Let's say today. Okay, so today is another uh, keyword which is present in SOQL, so which will give you the today's date. Okay, let's see if it works like this. I'm just trying to check it. Okay, so we have to retrieve one record, which opportunity record, which name is TCS opportunity and the cre and created date is, which is created today. Okay, there could be another TCS opportunity also, which was like already there. So I want to check the one which is only created. today. And then I want to uh, create one account and that account I want to update inside our opportunity. So if that account is generated and if it's inserted, then I want to update the opportunity with that account field. Okay, so now when I execute from here to here, so let us see. So variable does not exist op. So we have something called op. So we don't want this op, we have o. That was the problem. And we want to update o. Okay, so this is the one which we want to update. Yeah, this does not exist as of now. So you can ignore this. Okay, so you can ignore this. Okay, let's check this out. Okay, so I, our code executed. We did not have any uh, syntax errors. Okay, so we can also go to our uh, org and we can check out the opportunity. Let's see. So the same opportunity is field is updated with the account. 
okay so similarly if we want to update any other field we can also go ahead and do that okay let's say if you want to update the amount okay that also you can do where did where did that go huh. if you want to update the amount that also you can do instead of updating the account account id or something if you want to update the opportunity uh, any other field that also we can do something like uh, hmm. what we'll do is we will retrieve the record first okay and then we'll uh, instead of account id we'll update something else so what we'll do is o dot uh, what we want to update amount okay so that is also a standard field so the api name is amount itself equals to then you have to give some integers because amount will accept decimals sorry not integer decimals so you have to give something like maybe one two three four five six uh, point uh, maybe nine something okay now if you want to update the amount so that should work let me try to execute this okay so it is working so now if we just try to refresh this uh, page so we should have some amount populated here whatever amount we gave that amount came here Okay. Similarly, if you want some more fields to update, you can update in the same uh, line also. Not not the same line, but before in the single DML operation, you can update all those. Okay. So remember the part where we learned about collections and using collections uh, in the S objects because that is very very important. Okay. So in all the operations from triggers or any kind of helper methods, we'll be always using that. So remember those points. Okay. So is this update operation understood? Uh, the update is fine, Nasaba. So, can you is that also linked with the the a dot id the, on 394? Can you explain that the relation for uh, 382 with the line? 382. The, two. The uh, uh, account what you uh, you just updated. Mm -hmm. How was it linked to 394? Because you took account first, right? account a equals to new account and you gave that in the account id right o dot account id equal to okay so this is something that we already did so the time when we did this when we updated this so that time that this update will already happen now if we don't execute that code that doesn't mean that that will disappear it has already updated in the database so it will stay there unless we delete that sure is yeah. that is that the question yeah it makes sense makes sense yes okay so we can add more things okay but unless you you remove that from the database using any kind of dml operation the database will stay exactly the same unless you do any dml operation either insertion or updating or deletion okay unless you manipulate the database it will never change maybe even though if you uh, execute the code or if you don't execute the code to to change anything in the database you need these yeah, okay, I I got it. Yeah. Right. Okay. 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 So that was just uh, uh, like different things that I wanted to show you guys. That's why I. So here, what we are doing is we are ju just we are not executing the whole code. We are just executing few lines of the code. That is why it, it, anonymous window is helpful because you don't have to create a whole class in order to execute something. You can just write a single line of code and that will work. If that the syntax is correct and if that is a valid code. So correct me if I sound wrong. Yeah. So for every updation or insertion or deletion, you use only one DML operation, right? If you want to manipulate any kind of fields in the data uh, object. You can do multiple also. You can do multiple also. You can do in a single DML operation also. Uh, you can update more records or uh, more fields from this uh, from the same thing. If you want to maybe update some more things like type. So we have some no, no, no. I, I, my question, I think you didn't understand, Sabha. So what I meant was in 373, you, you gave the DML operation, right? Is it for the whole, uh, is it for for multiple objects? No. If you want to update. No, this is just for okay. single object. And uh, for opportunity, the DML operation is update zero, right? No, this is update O. This is the opportunity, this one. This object, this this opportunity we are updating. So it will update only this one. It will not update all the opportunities. So yeah, well, my question here was about update O. You gave if uh, condition, right? Yeah. So that is 
like if you want to have multiple uh, objects and you want to manipulate the database mm -hmm. so you give that if statement if i'm not wrong no no this was just to check whether this uh, account is inserted or not this is just a demonstration you can remove that okay this is not fixed so this was just to check those things okay you can delete that also no problem okay so if you want to update multiple records at a time for that you need collection if you you need list or you need a map where you have multiple accounts or multiple of i don't think that's your question no well i i just give me a give me a quick overview what would you uh, put what do you define in a dml operation if you want to manipulate a database you already gave an example of, on opportunity mm -hmm. so can you tell me this uh, account can you define me uh, can you give me an explanation real quick on this 369 line an account yeah, yeah. So you gave the name of the account and account name and uh, name of the accounts, right? The name, the fields. Yes. Right. Yes. And you inserted it. So what yes. is the DML operation for it? Update, right? Let's insert. Insert. So we're insert. inserting it. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. My bad. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Yeah. I understood. Yeah. Okay. There's a little confusion. Yeah. yeah so maybe because we have used update also maybe because of that you got confused so yes yes yeah so update will only work if the record already exists in the database okay if it's a new record then you have to use insert okay okay so if it's a new record then you have to use insert if it's a like a, a existing record then you have to use update Sure, sure. I understood, Sabha. The only thing was uh, the uh, the the DML operation confused me a bit, so it's clear. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. So as of now, we'll keep it till this. Okay, this point. Okay, so in tomorrow's class, we'll see more about creating custom objects, and then we'll jump into a control statement. Okay, control structure. Okay, and then we have a lot more to cover. So, yeah, we need some time. Okay.